All right, and welcome everyone to the Jeanette Biro podcast. I'm Jeanette Biro, and I am so grateful you guys are here listening to the show. And uh, today we have a, again, a pretty significant message. Spirit is talking a lot right now, and they're talking a lot so that we can have a better understanding of what's going on and how to consciously choose what we do because of it. That is the biggest piece. We are being given information so that we can decide if we want to step into fear and stay afraid of everything or step into choosing consciously the actions that bring us more peace, help us feel in more control and help us move forward um, creating the realities that really reflect the life that we want on this planet within the situations that are at hand. So this is kind of what's going on. So. I want to tell you how this works for me a little bit in terms of getting messages because sometimes people are like, well, how do you see it? Can't like, do you just have conversations with them with spirit or do you watch it as a movie or how is it that they communicate? And honestly, they communicate in various ways. It's never the same. Sometimes it is conversations. Sometimes it's me just listening to them talking for a whole long time. Sometimes they lead me on a journey of Uh, signs and synchronicities. Sometimes they give it to me in pieces. I mean, it really is all of the things. And this one, this message was put together in pieces with them then at the end coming together and explaining it. And so it really, it started with a crow feather. It started with me finding a crow feather on my path. Now, I want to say for me, when spirit gives me signs or synchronicities, they have to be pretty specific for me to really pay attention in terms of uh, I, as I've grown my relationship with spirit over time, I am specific with the things that I would want to see so that I recognize the truth of what they're trying to say. That's just for me. But I say that because when I say I see a crow feather, it's not like I randomly saw a crow feather because we can find all kinds of feathers and things and, and all that kind of stuff. But for me, the first crow feather I found was placed purposely right in front of my feet so that I would step into it or on it, literally walking the way I was walking, which was a last minute change from the direction I was going to be going. So when I saw the first one, I knew for me that was a sign of something, a crow feather. They're leading me on a path. And to me, the raven and the crow can have lots of different symbolisms and death is one of them and darkness is one of them, but also messages from the higher realms, messages of wisdom, I really revere the animal. I think they're beautiful, highly intelligent animals. So to me, it's not just dark and gloomy. So I saw that one and I thought, okay, there's something here. So then about a week and a half, two weeks later, I find another one right on my path, like in my way. Again, not onto the side or anything like that, but in my way. And so I noticed it and I was like, okay, there's something they're leading me to. And then I found another one a couple of weeks later and then another one. And then the other day I found one And I was like, oh, it had been a little bit since I'd seen one. And so in my head, as I was walking over it, I said, okay, spirit, I realize you're showing me something. I realize you're leading me to something. I'm aware, I'm on board. Here I am, this is five crow feathers and I am willing to see whatever it is. And I left it, right? Like I said in the last podcast, you talk to spirit and then you leave them to show you how they can manifest it, right? So I said, I'm listening. I 100% know that it's a, um, an omen, a sign, a something. I'm open. And then only about an hour and a half later, I was walking another direction and came across a dead crow. And I thought, oh man, like really, a <laughs> dead crow. There isn't really much other symbolism for that. I mean, you can look it up. It can be transition, a change of phase, a new start. We're talking about the end of something and the beginning of something else. So I get that. But to me, then I had to go back to my center self. What does that mean for me? How does it resonate for me? Which is what you guys should all do with any signs or symbolisms symbolisms you ever get. Check how it resonates for you. What does that say to you? You can read all the other ideas of what other people say. And if one of those makes sense or a few of them, then go with it. But again, always check it with yourself. So I checked it with myself and to me, I was like, no, nope, this is something uh, negative. There, there is a, a death of sorts. And so I was like, okay, fine. I accept that, here we are. Then I kept having visions of volcanoes. I was having visions of oceans. 
but then also of Lemuria. And for those of you that don't understand or know of Lemuria, I'm sure most of you have heard of the lost island of Atlantis, right? It was a higher civilization that was around before the time of Egypt. Um, and those before that, uh, the continent basically, or the island of Atlantis sunk from a massive earthquake, people moved around the world. Some landed in Peru, some landed in Mexico, some landed in Egypt, and so on and so forth. Now, Lemuria, <clears throat> excuse me, Lemuria was another island on the Pacific, on the Pacific Northwest. It was a massive island, I guess we could call it a continent as well. And it was an enlightened island of enlightened beings and all this kind of stuff as well. So, I'm shown that. And to me, when I see Atlantis and Lemuria, regardless of what other people say, how, you know, it went dark and it went, there was fighting and all this kind of stuff and it made it sink. There was a time in which both places were beautiful and harmonious. Just like in ancient Egypt, there was a time where they lived in the golden age, a balance of science and spirituality, of male and female, of light and dark. It was balanced and harmonious. So to me, so was Atlantis and Lemuria at a time so when I get references to those in that way, I know they're talking about a time of balance, of harmony. And so I'm seeing these patterns. So what I started to understand was that there was still going to be patterns of, unfortunately, death and destruction. And also earth events, which is represented by the volcano, but that it would lead to energies and balance over time like that of Lemuria. And to me, Lemuria has a really, really extra beautiful, bountiful, bountiful energy that sits in my heart when I think of it. And so to me, that's like a, a beautiful place, utopia almost, right? And so I was seeing this pattern and then I had this beautiful voice of a woman come through, this um, goddess-like energy come through saying, August, it all starts August. So that's why I've been kind of talking about August the last little while. Even back in May, I think Spirit was coming through saying July would be really intense and dark, which it was. All the fires led to really actual dark skies. And August would really be coming in like a ton of bricks. And that seems to be very true. We have climate crisis coming to the forefront. We have COVID things coming to the forefront, political things coming to the forefront. We have a lot of stuff coming to this kind of explosive center. Plus we have a lot of earth activity as well. There's been earthquakes uh, and volcanoes up in Alaska and all over the world. There's just a lot happening. And so there is gonna be more that happens in August. August is gonna be really revealing. And the reason why is it helps to shift things so that we know where to go and what to do with them come mid-September into October. Because October to December, what I'm being told from Spirit right now, is where we are really being given the opportunities to start making the shifts on the bigger levels. Not just the internal shifts that we've been working on right now. A lot of the emphasis has been personal internal work. But starting October, they're saying that's going to be where we start uh, moving like a community or like a collective, making collective shifts for the better. That's, that's why the squeeze is on right now. But if we talk about this squeeze, the way that they showed it to me was this big, massive tree. And this massive tree has these big roots at the bottom and just like huge, massive tree. I'm talking like old growth forest tree. And it's although it's a beautiful, sturdy, strong, almost everlasting tree, it has this really big storm raging around it. And so that's spirit acknowledging the storm. And when I asked them, how long is the storm going to last? They said that unfortunately, the storm, meaning the fear energy, meaning the confusion energy on our planet right now, and that feeling of chaos will last a while yet. So we're not out of the woods in terms of the energies we are really playing with. That's going to be lasting for a while yet because it needs conscious choice to move forward and start to shift. And that hasn't happened yet on a collective level. So something to consider. Now this tree though at the same time had a beautiful representation because when I looked at the strength of the tree, the size of the root systems within it, it really showed me when I tuned into it that Mother Earth, which was represented by this tree, is willing to withstand the storm and move through it. 
So there was a sturdiness there and like a feeling of safety. And so I really want to say that because although I'm bringing through messages that like, you know, the darkness isn't going away yet, fear and chaos isn't going away yet, it may double down. Those are all true. And, and to be honest, I was kind of like, Spirit, can't we bring through a really happy message today? Like, can't we bring through something really joyous and bright? And they said, well, but the reality is, or the truth of the matter is, is these chaos energies are going to perpetuate. But here's where the but comes in. Mother Earth is still willing to withstand it and move through it because again, her desire is to move forward. So if you remember back in June when we talked about the fires coming in, which then did, Mother Earth said it was to kind of create a burn to in a sense, cleanse the land of darker energies. So she's willing to sustain a burn to move forward. She is not going backwards. She is not wanting to self-destruct or implode or explode. She is wanting to move forward. So she is moving forward. It's humanity that has to catch up. Humanity is the one going the wrong direction. Not everybody, but a lot of people, unfortunately, are going the wrong direction into the fear narratives, into the chaos energy, feeling lost, detaching from their selves, detaching from spirit, from their heart, from compassion, from the kindness, uh, and from community. And so because of that, it will perpetuate. This, this energy, this narrative will perpetuate and really sustain itself for a little while. So, but the but that I'm coming back to that they said is there is a power though that we can tap into in every sunrise and every sunset. And if you remember too, I mentioned before that the speed of change was so fast. I think a couple podcasts ago, maybe a month ago, I said that it was changing like every two days, every two to four days. Um, the probabilities or the trajectories of where we are going were changing and fluctuating every two days. Well, now it literally is within 12 hours. The changes are so rapid and so significant and going up and down in timelines and probabilities in all of those things literally every 12 hours, which is why Spirit said the big but that they're talking about is tune in to the energy of the sunrise <clears throat> or and or the energy of the sunset. And in those two moments, you can tap into the current frequency and adjust or step back or do whatever you need. Your best ability to recalibrate as things change is in the sunset and the sunrise because you will get the latest pulse, the latest uh, energetic signature that you can understand, which will really help you through your day and also help you sleep better at nighttime. It'll give you that understanding because remember, the sun and the solar consciousness is more than just sunlight that helps plants grow. The sun on our planet actually has light code information. The sun rays that reach us are more than heat. They actually have intelligence. and. I talked about this in one of my cosmic consciousness circles, how the sunlight actually has, um, or the sun itself was one of the first aspects of consciousness. When everything was created, solar consciousness was one of the first ones. Water was another one. There's a consciousness within it. So there's a consciousness in this sunlight. And so again, if you can stand or sit or meditate or somehow honor the energy every morning, the sun will let you know what's happening within the collective consciousness energetically. You may get information, but I'm not saying you're gonna get like a news download like you would if you're looking at CNN of the latest headlines. It's not that, but it's gonna energetically wash you in what is best for you that day or what is, what is really going on collectively or energetically and cosmically that day in the morning so you can calibrate to it, move through your day, and then it'll do almost like a recap or a shift or a change in the sunset. So really use those two if you're really needing to recalibrate daily, twice a day, if you need. It's just the same as for some people, they find taking a shower in the morning helps them wake up and taking a bath at night helps them come down. They're using water as an element of consciousness to help that happen in their bodies, whether they recognize it or not. This is the way that spirit is saying to use the solar consciousness element to help us recalibrate our energy as well. So 
Again, the idea is the storm is going to rage. Let the storm rage without being fearful. It's like observe the storm raging, knowing that you are okay. You are as steady as that massive tree with the huge root system that is not going anywhere, regardless of the storm around it. You can tune into that energy, tune into the energy of Mother Earth and be with her, be with that consciousness. And then anchor yourself in the energy of the sun, the consciousness of the sun. It is there to help you recalibrate. And as well, as these dark and turbulent times are morphing and changing and moving along on our planet, remember that you are here for a reason. You really are here at this time during this massive change point that we are at. You came here as a soul for a reason, to either experience what it's like, to be a part of those that can really make a change on this planet, to raise your voice to help that change happen, or to hold a high level of light consciousness, meaning a high level of love and compassion in your heart so that you become a safe space for those that are getting whirled around in the chaos and fear narratives. We are all here for a reason right now. And so instead of running from it in fear, let's turn together and look at it, hold a frequency, hold the light, hold safety, you know, and detach from the craziness that is around us. Not in ignorance by any means. It's not in ignorance, but it's in choosing the energies that really align with you so that you can move forward and create in the way that you're supposed to because of why you're here. So I hope that helps make sense of these things and these energies happening right now. Uh, there's a lot, there's gonna be a lot but we will see what continues to unfold throughout August. And uh, hopefully we have a better idea of what's coming around September in the September energy update. I will tune in before that and let you guys know what there is. But until then, hold your light, you guys. You are love, you are beautiful, and you are here for a reason to do your thing. <laughs> so <laughs> anyways, I'll leave that with you guys for now. and. Uh, I hope this actually really helped to instill you with some tools to move forward, but also to like feel renewed instead of weighed down with everything happening, right? Like we can really choose our perspective of how we move through this. So the intent from Spirit and from me is that this kind of helped you choose your perspective. Anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will be back next week with more.